Hello everyone, welcome to Penumbra Overture. This is a horror game from Frictional Games, who are the studio behind the... probably their most well-known work, which is uh, Amnesia the Dark Descent. So it's a three-part series. This is the first game, Penumbra Overture. The second game is Penumbra Black Plague. And the third... Uh, I don't think it's technically a game, I think it's called an expansion pack, is Penumbra Requiem. So it's quite a long series. And... I'm really looking forward to play it because I've already... I've played through all of Frictional Games' games. And I'm a huge fan of theirs. Some people... I, probably most people, really. Or all people, maybe? Wouldn't really know this. But I am a huge fan of Frictional Games. I respect them so much, and I've loved every single game that they've made. Now, I, the thing is, I haven't really made any videos. Actually, no, I definitely haven't made any videos... ...on any of their games, because I played through all of their games before I even had a YouTube channel. So, I was thinking about replaying Amnesia the Dark Descent, but I realized that it's been... It's just too recent that I've played it. It's too fresh in my mind, so it just wouldn't really be effective to me. To play it again, it really wouldn't be very scary, it wouldn't... Yeah, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't really work. However, it's been many years since I've played through the Penumbra series. So, I think it's time to revisit it. I think it's time to wind back the clock and look at where Frictional Games came from. This is the first game they made, and they hit it out of the park. Right from the first one. They really did. They've improved a lot. The, the second Penumbra game is a lot better than the first, and Amnesia the Dark Descent is much better than the entire Penumbra series. However, it's still really good, the first one. Their very first game was really good. I really do love Frictional Games. They've, they've managed to improve the quality of their games so fast. It's just a, it's such a short amount of time. Like, I think they made Penumbra... When did they make it? They made it in, like, 2007 or 2008. And then they came out with Amnesia the Dark Descent in 2010, I think. So it's been a very short amount of time, but the, the amount that they've improved in such a short amount of time is really astounding. And I just have the utmost respect for them, because... Because... The horror genre is, some, is something that I really love, but... To be honest, most developers making horror games don't really innovate very much at all. The vast majority of horror is unfortunately just very derivative stuff that's just kind of the same thing that, that came before, and it's usually very cheap, and it's kind of like thrill ridey haunted house sort of thing, just full of, like, jump scares and whatnot. However, Frictional Games... The, reasons I, uh, the reason I love them so much, one of the reasons is because... They've... They're so dedicated to innovating and doing new and interesting stuff with horror. And you can see that very strongly, even in their first game right here. It's really cool. You'll see. You'll see, you'll recognize a lot of elements that you see probably further developed in Amnesia the Dark Descent. Uh, I think that's all there is to say. Yeah, I could probably talk about fictional games for a very long time. I really love them. They're an awesome company. Oh, wait, no, no, there is more to mention. That's right. Um, this game, or... I shouldn't just say this game, actually. Um, the, the Penumbra Collection, as it is called, which is the collection of all three of them, the, the first two games and then the third expansion pack, is uh, it's available on a bunch of different places, including Steam and GOG.com, and probably other places as well. Um, I'll put links to all of that in the description, but I definitely recommend playing these games for yourself. They're, they're really, really cheap. You can buy the entire collection for full price is $10.00. And I got I got the collection on sale for two fifty. It's it is it's mind-bogglingly cheap, really. Just I really recommend recommend buying it. It's an incredible deal. Okay, I think that is all there is to mention. Um, let's see, I mentioned stuff and more stuff, and I mentioned more stuff. Oh yeah, all right, let's get going. And I should just warn you that the first half hour of the game is probably going to be me playing with physics. Oh yeah, it's gonna be fun. Let's go. One of the strange things about the Penumbra series that you don't see in Empty of the Dark Descent is the fact that you actually have to select difficulty. Yes. Because the first Penumbra game, this one, actually has combat. Which is very strange. They they quickly realized it was a mistake and there is no combat in the second Penumbra game, Black Plague. And of course there's no combat in Empty of the Dark Descent. So unfortunately there is combat. Which works out kind of strangely. You'll see. But let's go for normal.
For my part in this allegory, I'm not going to make the same mistakes my father made. Howard vanished from my mother's life before I was even in it, so when he sent me a letter a few days after Mum's funeral, it was the first I'd ever heard from him. Pity he was dead. Writing from beyond the grave must be a genetic habit in my bloodline. His letter contained a key, instructions, pleas for forgiveness. I figured the dead don't have much use for absolution, so I turned to his prophetic passing, which he inexplicably expected to come any day. Clearly averse to explanations, my father preferred to leave directions to a bank on Mayfair I'd never even heard of. In that bank was a safety deposit box in his name, and myself as executor. Of course, I went as he knew I would. I discovered that despite the evidence, he'd been legally declared dead almost 30 years ago, and said the old book and collection of notes I found had, in the eyes of the law, been mine all this time. My father's instructions were to burn the documents, raise no further questions. But that was his error. No man's immune to the shameful trappings of curiosity, and my humanity got the better of me. The university I taught at was world-renowned for two things, physics and linguistics. I represented the first, and the man who stood for the second was stumped by my recent acquisition. The book was indecipherable. The notes, however, showed a location somewhere in uninhabited northern Greenland. It took me almost a year to book the last flight I'd ever take. As I watched civilization disappear along with Heathrow, I realised my father had disappeared three decades ago, almost to the day, and I considered in turn what it was that I was leaving behind. We landed on a strip of ice a few feet wide, and within minutes I was pulling away on a chartered boat, beginning the 12-hour journey that would lead me into my past. Finally, we're almost docked. I'd better stow my gear. I may be far from home, but chances are I can still pick things up using left mouse. I can take a closer look at things using right mouse. So, yes, right off the bat, the game is very awkward. <laughs> He's actually telling himself in character, I can still pick things up using left mouse, and I can take a closer look at things using right mouse. It's very strange. Very, very strange. Yeah, they've gotten better at kind of um, helping the... Uh, they've gotten better at not putting those sort of immersion-breaking elements into the game. Uh, frictional games. In their later games, they, they get a lot better at it. So again, we're going back to their roots. This, this is Frictional Games' first game. So understandably, it's not as good as their later ones, but it's still really damn good. So I promised that I would spend the first 30 minutes playing with physics, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. Not, not literally the 30 minutes, but... But, yeah, one of the really, really cool things about the Penumbra series, and in fact about all of the games that Frictional Games has made, is the involvement of physics. And that is exactly... Uh, that is a big focus here, just as it was in Amnesia the Dark Descent. So you can do very similar things that you could in Amnesia, such as opening drawers like this. It's the same sort of system. And it's very, very cool. I can't stress just how cool that is and how much it makes you feel like you are actually a part of the world and can influence it. It's so... Uh, I just... It's so much fun. It, it's so much fun to do this. Just... Ah. Uh, it's amazing. This is why I love frictional games. I'm hitting a soup can against a... A lantern. And it's the most fun thing I've ever done. Yep. It's pretty cool, too. You can even enter this sort of... Um, what do they call it? It's called... Interact mode. Yeah, if you press R, you can enter this mode where you can kind of move the... The pointer around the screen without moving the view. Which is pretty interesting. Like, hey, let's say I want to put this soup can on top of the locker. Of course, you could just do that, you know, doing the normal way, but you could also do it like this. I'm just gonna do that, and... Oh, does it need to be a little bit further in? No, pull it back. Let's, let's read it. Squid soup. <laughs> Un Uncle Cthulhu's squid soup. <laughs> I had no idea it said that. 
Uncle Cthulhu's Squid Soup. Well, thank you, Uncle Cthulhu. You sound like a nice individual. Just plop, plop that on there. You know, you know, I've just decided I'm going to put it right there. There we go. Yep. Tell me that's not the coolest thing ever. And would you stop moving? You Get, get on the shelf. Oh, don't fall. No. Come on, come on. Ah. Gotta get the soup can out of the way. Get. Ah, got it. There we go. Yeah, it's really, really, really cool. You can even toss stuff. <clears throat> Jack Daniels. Do you know what I say to Jack Daniels? I say, fuck you! Actually, that didn't say Jack Daniels did it. I think it said some, some sort of non-copyright infringing thing, like Jake... something. Yeah, I... I just love what they've done with the physics. It's really awesome. Alright, uh... What was I supposed to be doing? I was supposed to do something. Ooh. Oh, more, um... Let's read what it actually says. Unfortunately, I don't think you can rotate stuff. I haven't found a way to rotate it. What does it say? Jake? Yeah, Jake... Annuals? I think it says Jake Annuals. Well, here's what I think of you. Ugh. It's just so satisfying. The flashlight switches on and off via the inventory tab, or hopefully with the shortcut key F. <laughs> hopefully, like they think their shortcut key system might be broken. Man, the physics are so good. So, so good. Look, look at, just look at, look at the way it even bounces. Look at that. And the sound design is pretty damn good. It's not amazing, but it's pretty good. Oh, fisherman, fisherman wife's love letter? Is that what that said? Dearest Eric, just a quick note before you set sail and leave me once again. I've left you a little something to try to remember me by in the chest at the foot of your bed. I really don't know why you only, uh, still only have one bed on board. Taking shifts because of it is no way to get your rest. But what does a fisherman's wife know of life at sea? I'll be praying every night for you to make the catch you need, so that you can come home to me safely. And soon... Please don't be gone for five weeks like last time. I know I might nag sometimes, but I do love you, you know. I've washed those overalls of yours. I know you'll get them covered in assorted fish parts in no time, but I still feel better knowing they've had a wash. Before I forget, the Henriksons in the village have asked me to see if you'll be coming by any trout, but I said they were mostly out of season. If you do happen upon any, don't say anything. Stow them well in the ice, and I'll do something special with them to celebrate when you come home to me. The ship's captain deserves a little special treatment once in a while. Take care, my love. Oh, that's sweet. Alright, how do I enter my journal? I, J, Q... I don't remember how to play. Tab? That's the inventory. I don't know. The game will tell me when I need to. For now... Let's put something back inside of here. I don't think that's gonna fit. No, nope, that's not gonna fit. Uh, will the duffel bag fit? Oh, that looks perfect! Oh, come on. I know you can fit. I know you can fit. Oh, it's so perfect! That couldn't be more perfect. There we go. Did I say duffel bag? Is it a sleeping bag? I think it's a sleeping bag. I don't know, whatever the hell that is. It's, it's a bag of some sort. I'm certain this map's a good decade or so out of date, but landmarks don't change much in Greenland, so I've got a pretty decent idea of where I'm heading. Pretty odorous. Glad I'm getting out of here soon. They must eat and sleep and, well, do everything else in this one room for weeks at a time. Yep. Very true. It's a rickety wooden desk. 
I can get that drawer open if I just hold the interact button and drag with the mouse. Yeah, so this game is kind of like a combination horror and uh, adventure game. It has a lot of elements of adventure games, which I really like. The element, as you're just seeing, is the fact that you can get descriptions for a lot of even very mundane things, like a desk. Even this, look, even this um, locker has a description. The crew seemed friendly enough, but just in case, I locked up my valuables. I'm pretty sure the key's in my inventory somewhere. Once I found it, double-clicking the left mouse button should get it selected. Then I can press interact on the padlock to unlock it. There it is. Done. Good thing I have my torch at hand. This country seems to exist in a permanent state of... I don't know what the rest of that said. It disappeared. Ah, some extra batteries to power my flashlight. Could come in handy if the torch runs out of batteries. I should be able to access it through my inventory or with the shortcut key G. Yep, that's for my glow stick. Which uses no battery power. Of course. Hold on. I'm going to grab the suit. And put it right there. From the smell, I'd say there's an equal chance they use this chest for personal belongings or bait. Anything up there? Nah. Somewhere out there must be land and answers. This fog closed in on us almost as soon as we left port. Haven't seen any landmarks for ages now. I don't know how they're managing to navigate. I'd be as good as lost at sea if it was if I was on my own. Not a thought worth thinking. Always good to have a notebook, N, to jot down interesting information and reminders. P. Okay, N and P. That should be everything I need. I want to get going before dark. Okay, N is that. P is... Oh, P must be objectives, which I don't have any yet. Yeah, a to-do list. Okay. There's the love letter. One last little bit of physics fun before I leave. And the physics on that seems strangely rigid. Yeah, for some reason the chain doesn't bend. Weird. As I stepped off the boat, setting out into the blizzard that had formed around me, I realized how utterly devoted I'd been to the discovery of my father's past. I had no idea what to expect. Soon enough, my concerns were justified. I don't know whether I lost my orientation or my spirit first, but I lost feeling in my extremities soon after, and new hypothermia was setting in. I started looking for shelter. So cold. Don't know where I am. Need shelter soon. Right, so apparently I'm incompetent at navigating and got myself totally stuck here. My entire hand went numb. A uh, head went numb a long time ago. But I can... Okay, that's gone before I've even had time to read half of it. Damn you, Philip! Have your text on screen for longer. So yes, I'm apparently incompetent. How do you even get yourself in such a situation? Some sort of cold ravine. What in the hell is that? I don't care. I need shelter. Looks frozen shut. Need something to break it. I've jotted down, jotted down a note just in case. Can't get in. The ice is too thick. I need something like... Something to, something to break it. Something heavy. This should do. If I click and hold the interact button... Mm -hmm. I should just about manage to pick up that rock. The colds may be weak, but I can still throw things using the examine button. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I use interact mode, I can swing the stone more accurately. Ooh, I could throw it or I could swing it. Let's swing it. This is going to be... F oh, I love the, the interaction in this game. Okay, look at that. So... Uh, 
No, no. That was just a practice run. Also just a practice run. I got this. I got this. I got this. There we go. Oh god, it sounded like a wolf. I hope to god it's not frozen inside as well. So, oh god, I can't read the text. Okay, open, open, open. Get me out of this cold. Yeah. Hearing backwards talking is a bad sign. Just saying, it's a bad sign. Jesus, my head. I can't believe I fell that far and survived. Although looking around, maybe I didn't. What is this place? Oh wow, I fell that far. I should have known that rusty old ladder wouldn't hold my weight. But I didn't have any choice. I'd rather die down here than suffer the cold any longer. Yeah, the, the physics interaction is just, it's so satisfying in games, and the way they've implemented it is just awesome. It's just the simple action of swinging a stone to break open ice, to be able to turn a lever, and then actually you get to open the hatch. It's so much more satisfying than just like pressing E on something. You know, in a lot of games you would just press E or press F, or whatever the interact button is, and you would open the hatch. But to actually have to physically open the hatch is... Oh, it's amazing. It makes such a big difference. Alright, well I can use my flashlight, but I only have... Uh... Yeah, you burn battery power. Just like... It's the same sort of system as an Amnesia the Dark Descent, except instead of oil, it's actually battery power. And apparently you have the most inefficient flashlight in the history of the universe. So I'm going to go ahead and use my glow stick instead of my flashlight for now, because it does not use power. A little ghoulish, but should be a decent fallback if the torch cuts out. Oh, shame it's so old it drains a couple of batteries an hour. No kidding! Yeah, it says the glow stick is a decent fallback if the torch cuts out, but how about I just don't let the torch cut out in the first place? I think that's what I'm going to do. Emergency exit procedures. I don't think anything could help me get out of here except a very tall ladder. And anyway, why would I want to? Because I would just freeze to death. Yeah, I can even move this stuff. Yeah. A heavy looking wooden barrel. Could be anything inside it. Oh, it looks like ammo. 105 ammunition. Empty boxes of ammunition. What is this place? That's a good question. So, we're out in Greenland. And it's in a bunker. And there's ammo. Some sort of a military outpost research something or other? I am genuinely asking these questions, by the way, because even though I have played these games before, I don't remember very much about them. I'm sure some things will come back to me, but I really don't remember the story. One thing I do remember, though, is this. Hello. Gotta play with physics to get stuff. Flare. Ooh. A steel rod. That could be used to pry stuff. These flares are going to come in handy. Let's do this. Hold on. If I move it like that, I can have it fall over. Except now it needs to be rotated. Oh, I got to get this right. Come on, how do I rotate you? I could rotate you by doing this. Yep. Tell me that is not a thing of beauty. Look at that. Look, look at that. 
It's stuck. There must be something in the way. <sighs> I think you should be on a higher shelf. There you go. Oh, I've changed my mind. I think you should be over there. There you go. More empty boxes of ammunition. What if there's some flares back here? Nope. Let's roll you back on over. Oh, some food. Might still be edible. Maybe. Whoops. I dropped it. I hope no one's looking. Let's see. I can swing this hammer if I hold left mouse. I can make a backswing by pulling the mouse right. Okay, yeah, I know how to do that. I reckon if I hold on right, mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's um, one of the things used for combat. Although, I don't think it's only used for combat. However, you can use it for combat. I'm not exactly sure what it's used for. I just know it is at least used in combat and probably other stuff as well. Which is very strange. It really is strange that they decided to put in combat. Thankfully, they realized it was a bad idea in the second game and totally removed it. But for now, there's this wonky combat system that is kind of cool and kind of just strange. So, uh, the combat system and this hammer uses sort of like the physics system that the rest of the game uses. Where you actually have control over where it moves. It's, it's not a strict control, though. You can't move it wherever you want. It's kind of like, I guess... Maybe it's kind of like Mountain Blade, where you kind of move the mouse in a certain direction to get a certain strike. So, for example, if I move the mouse right and then left, it'll do this. And if I move it left and then right, it does that. And if I move it back and then forwards, it's a stabbing motion. So, ugh. So it's, it's kind of following the general movement of your mouse, but it's not strictly following it. But it's really cool. I can't. Re I can't strictly remember why. I mean, I can't exactly remember why the combat system ends up being wonky. But for some reason, it is. I guess we'll see when we come to it. It's a 24-hour ration pack, long past its sell-by date. Oh, I can't even pick up stuff when I have the hammer out. Hold on, though. Let's bash some barrels first. Yeah. That is satisfying. I wonder if there's actually anything in them. You think so? I doubt it. We're about to find out. Nope. One more. Just for completionist's sake. Okay, there's nothing in them. What if I can break down this pillar and cave the entire place down on my head? Okay, that's probably not gonna work. That's suspicious. Can I move this thing? I can't fit. I could try to break it right now, though. Hmm. Oh, there we go. The only problem is I can't fit a metal shelf. How do I move it? Could I perhaps use the bar? Christ, what am I thinking? <laughs> I'm thinking of logic. Pry it away. Oh, here we go. That's what I wanted to do. Yeah.
That didn't sound good. Ooh, multiple pathways. Um, let's go this way. Oh, they lead to the same place. Okay. What the heck is that? Alright, well, let's see the other side of the door. It was blocked by a barrel. Oh! <laughs> and that's where I want to go down? This hatch is seriously solid. It won't open by hand. Someone obviously wanted to keep people out. Or in. This looks like some kind of industrial mechanism. Although there's a hole in the center, and no way to operate it. Let me guess. Rod? Yep. But, how do you operate it, though? You ro oh, you rotate it. That's a strange mechanism. Well, I think this is going to be my last glimpse of the surface for maybe forever. Let's go say goodbye. Goodbye, frozen surface. Whatever I was descending into, it was a hundred feet below ground, protected by two solid metal hatches located in a remote arctic wilderness and buried beneath the snow. I didn't know what to expect, but it made me feel something I hadn't felt since I was a child. I'd never given it much thought before, but I realized that our entire society is a network of safety nets, emergency services at the end of a phone line, health and safety in the workplace, friends, family, lovers, all there if something goes wrong. Part of a carefully designed structure to prevent all but the most mundane of emotions. Once again, I felt like I did when I was in school, surrounded by a closing ring of older kids, knowing anyone that might help me, friends, parents, teachers, were too scared, or too far away. Jotted down a note, just in case, what did you jot down? Whoa, what the? There could be anything living down here. Heroics are for Hollywood actors and fairy tales. I'm not taking any chances. If I face off against anything down here, I won't last a second. Caution and stealth are my only defenses now. If anyone or anything hears me, I'd be best off staying low and out of sight until I know whether or not it's a threat. You can crouch, mm-hmm, hide in the shadows. I'll know I've got it right because of the blue tint to my vision. Better remember to show off any lights. Okay, so just common, common sense stuff, basically. Crouch, stay in the shadows, turn off your light. My best bet is to hide for a couple of seconds or so, perfectly still. And that'll make me properly hidden. Wait, what was I gonna do? I was gonna do something. Oh yeah, the entrance to the cave has caved in. There must be another way out. It's stuck. I'm trapped. I need to get out. Honestly, do you even want to get out? I mean, what's waiting for me out there other than frostbite? I don't know. Hmm. That might serve as a distraction. And this could be used to bludgeon something to death. So yeah, as you can see, the game obviously doesn't want you to fight. It even specifically tells you the best... You know, don't do Hollywood heroics, the best bet is to just stay low and hide. So, the fact that they actually allow you to fight is very strange. It doesn't really make any sense. Where are my tinder boxes? This place must be old if they were still using paraffin lamps. Looks like there's still some juice left. I just need something to light it with, I guess. A wooden box. Not as heavy as it looks. Still, it should serve as some form of weapon if I have to defend myself. Really? I guess... Yeah, I get throw it. I think I like the rock more, though. Yeah, I think I'll take the rock. Okay. 
so yeah, this game has, um... If I remember right, it has some almost labyrinthian environments. So I'm there, and as you can see, it's quite large. Where should I go first? Storage? Oh, I'm so gonna get lost. At least there's some helpful signs. Let's go to storage. I could use my flashlight. Eh. Yeah, I'll use my flashlight. Alright. Office, workshop, or storage? St I think it says storage. It's kind of all messed up for some reason, but yeah, that's storage. Oh yeah, there. It's weird. Signs on the ground. Storage room. Lots of useless junk. At best. At best, it could be a decent hiding spot. Storage room. better do I have left? I started at 60 and I have 54. Alright, it's not training too fast. I'm actually surprised the door wasn't locked. Hopefully I can get some supplies in here. It is a storage room after all, so that is what it should have. I hear bugs. Yeah, I mean, even though this game came out in... Was it 2007? 2008? So at this point, it's five to six years old. It's still a really good-looking game. It really is. What the hell? I think I'll leave that closed for now. I hear breathing behind there. Ooh, a lighter. If this lighter wasn't empty, it'd be a handy thing to have. Oh. <laughs> I like the helpful little tip here. Lighter plus fuel equals... There's a little fire and a happy face. It's a crude representation of a scorched... writhing spider. Oh, am I gonna have to burn spiders? Spiders equals sad. The work of either a child or a deranged mind. I would bank on deranged mind. Oh, there's more. What is that? This shows some kind of trap door, but I can't see where it would be. I don't understand what I'm looking at. It looks like a bunch of stones inside of a box, then a bunch of stones not in a box equals... I, I don't know. Steam? Looks like steam, like steam equals death. Just old paint cans, dried up long ago. Let's see if there's anything usable here. Lots of paper boxes with rusty with rusty nails. Yeah. Somebody's boots. The sound design really is impressive. It's really good. Reams of wiring. Okay. Let's uh, let's open the door. Oh. Locked from the other side. That... Does that mean there's someone still inside? I can hear chattering. Thank God, maybe... Oh, what the fuck? Oh, the text! It disappears so quickly, I can't even read it. Maybe I'll bash it open with a boot. Didn't work. It's locked. Ah. What does my note say? There's a locked door with odd noises coming from behind it in the storage. Well, I don't have anything to open it with, do I? I mean, I could... I could try to bash it open with a hammer. 
Let me in. I guess I'll come back. Oh, wait a minute. There's a, oh, there's a door here. What the hell am I talking about? Oh, wait. This is the trap door thing. Yeah. A box of rocks. Box of rocks minus the rocks equals open. So it's some sort of a weight trigger? Is there some sort of a pressure sensor underneath this box? Oh, it's it's underneath it. Okay. It's not as complicated as I was thinking it would be. Is it locked? Oh, there we go. He's on the other side of this wall. He's right there. Ooh. Painkillers. Batteries and... This thing, which if I remember right, serves as a save point. Oh, what the hell? What just happened? I don't know if that was such a good idea. Yeah, if I remember correctly, those are save points, but they also serve as some sort of in-game... Uh, they're part of the narrative, somehow. Yeah, you can see there's no save here. So yeah, those are your save points. Which, for some reason, it doesn't seem to actually tell you. Which is a bit strange. I may never get used to that. So yeah, I guess if you didn't know that, you might think the game is unsavable. But, nope. You just need to use those objects. Time to go down. What the hell? His voices. Ooh. That looks kind of broken. It looks as if this basement caved in some years ago. Something's tunneled through here more recently, though. Christ, what sort of creature makes these markings? Hold on. I'm wondering if I could maybe break the floorboards. They look weak over here. Hmm. It might be back where I've already been. Yeah, I don't think I can. Christ, was that a spider? I don't like spiders. Apparently I could defend myself well if my lighter worked, but it doesn't. It has no fuel. It's a Zippo lighter, but it's empty. Painkillers. Well, I'd prefer a first aid kit, but at least if I'm injured, I can grin and bear it. Right. Three different ways. Oh, is that... Oh. It's a dead dog. A horrible sight. Luckily, it's mummified or else the smell would have been awful. It looks like this... Whoa. Oh. That would be the pipe equals death thing. Right, so this joins up with the center pathway, and then that goes over to the left. So what's over this way? Hmm. Who the hell left a note in here? And what is this? Dry, dusty old bags. It's a strange thing to have here. Day one. I begin this record, still in the hope that the great work we have undertaken here might one day be of scientific value, despite the chaos which has ensued in the six hours previous. My aim is to remain secure until what help there may be arrives, and to that end I have barricaded myself into a small workshop area in the abandoned part of the mine. I hope that the meager food rations here will keep me alive, 
and that those I hide from will not jeopardize that. Perhaps this mine really is cursed. It's almost precisely 30 years since the incident that brought us here. And now, 30 years on, fate has struck again. Wait a minute. Let's come back to that. Actually, how long? Holy shit! Okay, let's not come back to that. Let's do it now. Because otherwise I'm going to forget I even <laughs> I even read that. 30, um... Almost precisely 30 years since the incident that brought us here. Didn't Philip, I think his name is Philip, right? Didn't Philip say that it's been 30 years? It's nearly 30 years to the day? Since, since what? Since his father died? I think? I think it was. So maybe the incident is where his father died? Or supposedly died? Maybe the incident and his father's death are... the same sort of thing? They're connected? I'm thinking so. Alright, let's go. Deeper. Day 3. I forecasted that today the rescue crews would arrive, but I can only hypothesize that they would be unaware of my location and hence busy themselves evacuating the other survivors. If they have not arrived by tomorrow, I will go out in search of them. Day six. Oh yeah, and this, that brings me to my other point that I forgot to mention, which is if this is happening around the same time, if this is almost 30 years since the incident, and they are connected, and as Philip said, he is almost here 30 years since his father's death. If those are connected, then that means this note was not written very long ago. It must be very recent. Day 6. My first mistake was to make assumptions on the matter of rescue. My second mistake was to make assumptions on the safety of this mine. My third mistake was to act on both of those assumptions in going outside of my safe haven. My best estimate is that I left the workshop where I was secured about two days ago in search of aid, and I found only danger. I approached the old living quarters, uh, quarters but curiously could find no sign of life whatsoever. I returned in what I thought was the direction from which I had come, but soon found myself in an unfamiliar locale. Confused, but focused, I attempted to make my way home, but found myself threatened by some species of feral creature, which seems to have made this old mine its home. Although the specimen bore significant interest to me, I chose to retreat, only to find myself outmaneuvered and outnumbered by the beasts. I turned and ran, injuring my ankle in the process which I believe now is most likely a sprain rather than a fracture. For some time, I cowered and fled into the dark, but a few hours ago I discovered a door leading to a smaller disused part of the mine, the key for which I still have in my pocket. Within that area, I discovered this storeroom, and I think it should keep me safe for some time. This place is a maze. My lesson learnt. I will not venture out again until I am certain the area is safe. Okay, so he has a key on him. That must be the person that I heard. Breathing. Yep. It's gotta be. Day 19. Rescue seems increasingly unrealistic. Supplies diminishing. Lots of spiders in this place. I do not like spiders. Day 34. I caught one of the accursed eight-legged beasts nestling in my open mouth when I woke up this morning. In my surprise, I swallowed it. It is not so much the act of swallowing which concerns me, but the genus of arachnid. It would be unlikely that a cave-dwelling spider would be venomous to any significant degree, but the possibility troubles me all the same. Day 35. Any known venom would have affected me by now, and so today is the first minor cause for celebration I have had since the incident. By lucky coincidence, this revelation also means I've discovered a virtually inexhaustible supply of nutrition. I intend to venture into the basement beneath this storeroom, in the name of science, to discover more about these creatures' natural habitat. <laughs> okay. So apparently he's come down to where I am right now. And he's been eating spiders, or trying to. Ew. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's better to eat spiders than die, but ugh, that sounds disgusting. Day 50. For four days now, I have been surviving solely off the quite considerable sustenance provided by the spiders. For some time, I was struggling to gather enough of the crunchy little morsels. However, Lady Luck smiled on me once more when the batteries in my torch died, and I made a second life-saving finding. 
The creature, the creature's natural habitat is the dark. With my light now diminished, I need only lie still for a few minutes, and I will have attracted enough of the beasts for a rather hearty meal. Ugh. I admire your will to survive, but it truly sounds disgusting. The steam could blister flesh from bone in an instant. I know. I've seen it happen. And go. Why is he leaving notes down here? If it weren't for the size of the pieces, I would say it looks like an eggshell. Or it looks like eggshells. Hmm. Yeah. It's rather large. I'm thinking that's some sort of a... place where spiders came from. Some sort of an egg. Oh, it continues. Day 71. My earlier assumptions on the benign nature of my cellmates may have been made in error. After a careful autopsy, I am concerned that there may be a small volume of natural chemicals stored in the stomach which, if ingested regularly over a period of time, may become psychotropic, or even lethal. My only real chance is to break it out of uh, break out of here and raid any stashes of supplies I can find. However, the evidence against such a move is insurmountable. I have no source of light. I swore to myself I wouldn't leave until I heard human voices outside. And the spiders are so tasty. Day 100. Holy crap, this happened a while ago. Okay. Maybe the, maybe it isn't very recent. From the marks I've been making on the walls and my scribbled di diary entries, which in the dark may amount to an Ill illegible scrawl, today is the hundredth day of my new life. Over the past month, my edible friends have become more and more aggressive and have swelled in number and size. Whether or not this is a result of my plundering their ecosystem, I am unsure. However, at this rate of growth, they will soon be too large to crawl through the gaps in the walls. For all I know, I could only be seeing the tip of the iceberg. If all fails, and I am never recovered, I hope at least that my study of, and indeed involvement with, these fascinating creatures will one day be regarded as an important point in natural history. The greatest names in modern science got there more through fluke than talent, and it appears that this rule has been extended itself uh, has extended itself to my discovery of this delicious new species. I only pray that the second rule deems my breakthrough too insignificant. For all great discoveries tend to consume their inventor. Indeed. Okay. So he's worried that ingested over time they may become psychotropic or even lethal. So I'm guessing he's the one that made those mad scrawls on the wall. Those carvings in the wood. Because I believe Philip said they look like they were either made by a child or someone who was deranged. I'm guessing it was him. I guess I didn't time that right. Did I just get hurt? I think I did, but I'm apparently okay. Sounds like this place is about to cave in. Ah. Finally, this must be all that's left of the basement storage. That lock looks rather worse for wear. Oh, maybe I can break it. Yeah. If it's worse for wear, maybe a simple hammer would be able to do. Ah! Sweet! That is so cool. Oh, what is that? Fluid lighter gas! Yes! Oh! This should fire up now. Sweet! Oh, is this a quick slot? Oh, it is a quick slot. Cool. Ooh, I should put stuff in here. What should I put in here? Well, G and F is good. I guess just lighter and hammer. Nope. <laughs> Fair enough. I think lighting an old can of paint on fire would probably be a bad idea, or maybe even impossible. Ooh, a chess. 55% power. 
Oh, I can turn off the steam. Excellent. Right. So what am I going to be burning? Let me make sure I've been everywhere. I think I have. What about this? How's that going to work? I don't know. You said they're dry. Dry stuff burns, doesn't it? Yeah, I think that's everything down here. I think something just ate that person behind the door. Maybe it broke down the door so I can come in as well? It looks like someone's removed the ladder from these hooks with a pretty blunt saw. You must have known I was here and tried to prevent me from getting out. I could always just jump up though. All right. We have to move, yeah, let's move this over there. So I can jump out of here. That, that's not gonna work. Let's try something shorter. Nope. One more. Let's close that thing. I I think someone's been dragged through here. I've never seen this much blood before. I That was my best chance to get some answers. Who the hell is still down here? Or something to that effect, because it kind of disappeared again. Wait, blood. What are you talking about blood? What blood? Alright, close that first. It's a safety hazard. And safe. And then figure out what the hell's going on. Oh, that blood. Oh, Jesus. What the hell dragged him away? It sounded huge, whatever it was. Whoops, I... Crap, I didn't mean to do that, actually. Just gonna close that. Well, Jesus. There's the key. Oh, I guess I can light these things now, right? Yeah, okay. Excellent. A pencil. I'm writing. I'm aw. Where'd you go, pencil? Now I'm sad. I lost the pencil. Oh, it continues even more. Day 200. It has been some time since I recorded any findings in relation to the spiders with whom I have shared my existence for the past eight months. Partly due to my enforced retreat from their basement territory. Not too long ago, their behavior became overtly aggressive, and so I have attempted to barricade the main entrance to their lair, and secured myself within one of the smaller rooms above it. The only one with an operational door lock. The other reason is that I've been recovering from a minor operation, which I was forced to conduct myself without the aid of an anesthetic. Even if I did have any anesthetic or surgical tools, I couldn't afford to be less than diligent in my work, so anesthetic was out. Surgical tools are all well and good, but although it may be becoming old and rusty, I still trust my penknife to, to do the job just as well. Phew. The procedure itself was elementary enough, a simple amputation of a, a non-vital organ. I began to notice a thick, glue-like substance forming on my tongue, and was forced to 
except that it had become infected through constant toxin ingestion. He cut out his tongue with a pen knife? Oh! With no anesthetic. Jesus. Day 300. 100 days passed. The last one. Another century of days comes and goes. It seems like so long since I escaped here. At some stage since my last entry, I attempted to return from whence I came. That from which I originally was fleeing seems a fate far worse than the one I now face. However, in the time since I arrived from the larger mine system, a cave has occurred, blocking any further progress. I was forced to return and accept whatever, whatever end life has in store for me. I still hear my aggressive little friends scratching on the door to my cell. This man was just here going insane, eating spiders. With the spiders becoming increasing, increasingly aggressive and large. Well, at least this one's a little more positive, although I'd question its motivation. Yeah, what does it show? Uh, I think it shows a spider growing up and becoming larger. Years and years of reports, logs, and files just left here to gather dust. There's probably a century of life and death right here at my feet. Yeah, this have to be his reports. All the reports he made, all of his scientific findings. If I could get this out to the world, his life might have... The end of his life might have some meaning. Get some good out of it. Nothing. Is that... Is that his tongue? I think that's his tongue. Ew. Ew. Although, to be honest, it looks like double the size that a tongue would actually be. I'm pretty sure tongues aren't that large. Human tongues, anyway, but still, ew. The largest spider I have ever seen, with its gut carved open. Looks like this is where he did his experiments. Or his autopsies. I just love the ambience of this game. Look at that. Just look at the scene. Just beautiful and creepy. And all of the story elements this game has, all of the the detail, the depth, like this log, I just read the logs of basically an entire year of this man's life. Of him struggling, uh, hoping to get rescued, and then giving up hope. And then turning to eating spiders to stay alive. And then apparently that being kind of toxic and forcing him to cut out his own tongue. Assuming that was something that actually happened and he wasn't just going crazy. And all of these reports that are the work of the last year of his life. Just here on the ground. And the rooms in which he did his research. There's just so much... There's so much detail in the environment. I love it. Oh god. <laughs> this hole isn't large enough for a man. Not that I'd go anywhere near it, even if it was. What burrowed out this tunnel? Good question. It looks like he was dragged in- yep, he was dragged into it. That is a blood trail. What is that? Dried meat? Beef jerky. Beef jerky. Not without aroma. I th 
If I remember correctly, I think that's used as a distraction for the enemies. I think. Hmm. What the hell is that noise? Is it because I bumped the door? Okay, yeah, I bumped the door. You scared me. I may never get used to that. What is it? Some sort of an artifact. It doesn't look human, to be frank. It really doesn't look human. Hmm. Thule, or Thule. That name sounds familiar for some reason. Hmm. Alright. Well, I am going to end this episode here. But, yeah, it's been a while since I played this game, and it still holds up very well. I'm getting major nostalgia just from playing it again. And it's still a really good game. It's got amazing physics. Look, I just put a shoe inside of a drawer. Because I can. Ah, oh, just look, look at this. It's so good. Hold on. I need another object. Not, not his tongue. I don't want his tongue. Give me another object. Here, a boot. Another boot. Like, look at this. Go into interact mode. Oh, oh, there we go. Open the drawer up and... Oh, look at this boot. Oh, look, dynamic lighting. Excellent. Let's, let's look closer at this boot. Oh, that is a pretty boot. Alright, I'm gonna plop it down here. And I'm gonna close the drawer. What's in the top? Oh, there's another boot in the top drawer. Ooh, this chair. Hmm. Let's... Let's yeah, put you right there. There you go. Because I can. Just, just, I don't know if I can express how awesome the ability to do that is. It makes the world feel so much more alive. It's great. It's so great. It really is. It's got such a great physics system. And I love the detail in the environment. It's still a really good looking game, despite being relatively old at this point. Oh god, look at that. <sighs> Tongue. I'm not exactly sure how this is supposed to be read, but... Yeah, it's like scissors and tongue and <laughs> cutting his tongue out. Ugh. Yep. Looks like it's been carved into the wood with a knife. This game is just really good. I'm really, I'm so astounded that Frictional Games was able to make a game that's so good right from the first, just right out the gate. They made something that was fresh and original and inventive and just really good. And they've only gotten better since. They're such a good company. Really, really astoundingly talented people. Alright. Well, I hope everyone has enjoyed so far. And I will be back soon.